already um, made that cleat a little better and then added in this ratchet block here. Um, I've already replaced this line here. You can buy a stainless steel cable that goes between these two strap eyes, but I'm hesitant to remove the strap eyes just in case there's a block of wood underneath that might fall out, so I'm just tying a line to it. Um, the previous owner has a pulley block that allows this thing to travel back and forth real easily, um, and he has the main sheet tied to that. I want the main sheet removable, also I'm going to replace the rope. Um, so I'm thinking of using one of these snap eye clips, either directly to the traveler, because I mean, it doesn't really need a pulley, it, it travels just fine with that, or since the pulley's there, I might leave it on and just, you know, hook onto that, but that way the rope can, the main sheet can be taken off with the bundle of the masts. Right, this is 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths line. It's the absolute biggest you'd want to use for the main sheet or the halyard just because of the size of the various blocks and cleats and things you're going through. Quarter inch would be perfectly fine for this. Um, I just happen to like the 5 16 It's a little bit bigger in your hand when you're sailing. This line was okay. It wasn't going to break anytime soon, but it's getting frayed. Um, been stored in the sun a lot. I'm not going to be storing this guy with the mast bundle so it will be out of the sun except when I'm sailing. So this is good to keep around, give to your son if he wants some rope for something. Alright, looking at the sails, it has a couple of small rips. Um, there's one place where the grommet ripped out entirely and there's a piece of duct tape over it. Um, and there's several other places where it looks like it's been repaired in the past with reinforcing tape. Here's another grommet that came out that doesn't have duct tape. Reinforcing tape, reinforcing tape. Um, here's a grommet that just has broken the clips. I've bought a bag of clips. I'm going to be putting clips on these missing ones. Over here you can also see there's a clip that's broken off and a clip that's broken off. And this end cap on the top boom was loose, so I epoxied it in and I'm going to tie the out haul back in there. Um, all in all, the sail has some life in it, but it's at some point going to be needing to be replaced. I'll probably, before I do that, I'll probably buy some more of this and, and then take the sail completely off and repair a few of these little rips in places where things are missing. But today, I'm just going to replace the two or three plastic clips that still have grommets that need to be attached to. So I got the bulk bag of 30 sail clips. You need 29, so you get one for free, one extra for free. Uh, it's about, you know, anywhere from 15 to 25 bucks, depending on where you buy the bag. Now to get one of these broken clips off, you might be tempted to pinch the top here to squeeze it together and pull it off. I have not found that work very well for me. I found that putting these guys underneath between the grommet and the clip and then pinching in there gives me a bit of leverage with the pliers to pop it off. It does scrape your grommet up a little bit, so if you don't want that to happen, you'll have to cut it off or use some other technique. I'm probably going to be taking this sail off again to repair a few grommets, so I'm going to reuse one of these from the grommets that came out and use one of my new ones. The orientation of this doesn't really matter but I'm just going to follow the same orientation as the existing ones. These guys just snap together. See these replacement ones look a little bulkier than the originals. I'm uh, replacing the out holes on both the top and bottom booms just with this, it's either four or five millimeter, probably you know one sixth line. Um, doesn't have to be super strong on that. And my booms are not rigged to run it down to a cleat so you can adjust it, so I just tie it where I want it. I want to leave a little bit extra here in case I want to lengthen this out, but this is way too much, so I'm going to uh, cut it here, about there-ish.
as it turns out, the leftover line is going to be plenty to do the top boom as well. I'm using a Hankster 2 knot to um, attach the halyard to the upper boom. You could also do a clove hitch. So basically with a Hankster 2 you wrap around once, you wrap around a second time, you come around crossing over to this side over here, you pull this middle piece up, put your rope through, and then you have to tie a stopper knot. So you have to have enough rope to tie a stopper knot here. So. See if I can get a figure eight going. I want a little more at the end there, just in case it flips. Flip once. All right, so that's my figure eight stopper, and then you have to tighten this thing up. And it's good to tighten it up, kind of around on this side. and this knot will get pulled into there. And then, when you pull on this, it lifts your boom. And yet, it's also easy to take off should you need to. Run the halyard to your masthead, opposite your mast cleat if you have one. I don't. Step the mast and pull her up. I found that the angle on this gooseneck needs to be adjusted. Um, these two booms have this kind of hinge point between here, and you want this to be basically almost vertical, because there's some pulleys, blocks on the bottom of the boom, that go into the main sheet, and so you want those to be facing mostly down. So I think this has slipped at some point in the past. Um, you can adjust the gooseneck up and down to give different sailing characteristics, I'm just rotating this guy like that, and so I want it to be mostly upright when this guy is at kind of a 90 degree to the mast. I want this thing to be mostly upright here. So I'm going to tighten it down there. You can also put a bicycle cam bolt on this guy so you can adjust it on the fly, but I've never really felt the need to do that. Because I don't race these things. Before I adjusted the gooseneck, I found that this thing was binding when I was raising the mask. mask. Now you can see that once I get this upper boom to be kind of up, and the sail starts lifting the lower boom, that thing just slides right up as far as I want it to go without me having to wiggle it or touch it. All right, once you have your mast raised and your main sheet through both of the blocks on the mast, you want to put it through this ratchet and you want to make sure you're putting it in the right way so that when you pull on the boom, it ratchets for you. The sail with minimal effort. If you want to let go, off it goes. I have this bottom boom up at a uh, recreational height. If you were doing this uh, for racing, you might have that adjusted just a little bit lower. And my main sheet's a little bit long because I haven't trimmed it to size yet. I'm going to bundle up the sails, boom, and mast assembly, and I'm going to be putting the main sheet inside of the sail and using the halyard to tie everything together into one big bundle. So I can just unclip it from there and leave it attached to the bottom spar if I want. 
bottom boom. And if I do that, I should probably put it through the front pulley. So now I have everything, the halyard and the main sheet and the mast and the two booms and the sails all in one bundle. Only thing left in the hole is the painter and the traveler. Of course you're going to have your rudder and bagger board and so forth.